Please join us in welcoming Ed Castile, Deputy Secretary, Alabama Department of Commerce. Well, good afternoon, everyone. I guess I need to just get started. I, I wasn't really understanding the process here. I apologize. Um, but I've been asked to speak to all of you about the services, not only of the Al Alabama Industrial Development Training, the AIDT, but also the Alabama Department of Commerce, how we work with businesses across the state. And, and we do have partnerships and several relationships uh, in various programs with ADRS and, uh, and, and other organizations similar. So I'll, uh, if it's okay, I will tell you a little bit about our department and what my responsibilities are in the workforce area. And as I do that, I'll mention some of the partnerships we have with uh, various programs in the uh, rehabilitation um, space. The uh, Alabama Department of Commerce is divided into two things. It's a business development organization, in other words, recruiting business and assisting business as um, they come into the state, expand, perhaps it's with export trade or if it's a small business with various assistance in those, er in those kinds of things from finance to whatever. And of course, a lot of business recruitment is part of that. The Workforce Development Division, which I'm responsible for, uh, along with some very talented people, make our five programs. One is the AIDT I mentioned. Um, and AIDT is the industry specific uh, training incentive program for the state. Um, and I'll explain that a little bit more in a second. We also are responsible for the WIOA uh, Title I program. We're the uh, fiscal agent for that and work uh, very closely with career centers, the Alabama Department of Labor uh, and the career centers and um, many businesses, in some cases ADRS across the state. The Alabama Workforce Council, we in commerce are their administrative support. The Workforce Council is a group of business leaders who advise the governor, the legislative leadership, um, state superintendent of education, uh, chancellor of the college system, deputy secretary of commerce and others on workforce issues and perhaps some solutions to those issues and needs. We have seven regional workforce councils um, those councils are uh, similar to the AWC, Alabama Workforce Council, but they are in uh, uh, regional in the seven regions. And um, each one of those have uh, our business um, led, 75% uh, of the members uh, that vote in those councils are business leaders. And so it's um, certainly local and, and it was intended to be. I will mention back on the WIOA piece for a second, we also have seven local boards, seven local WIOA boards who uh, the, the map mirrors the councils. In some cases, the council is the WIOA board, local board. And then the final program in the Department of Commerce is the Alabama Office of Apprenticeship. So back to the AIDT, I mentioned uh, our job is to help bring business to the state and the incentive for the AIDT is if a company comes here, we will assist them in recruiting, screening, training their workforce at no cost. State pays, um, state funded and, and all those kinds of costs that we're uh, help a company with, uh, in some cases reimburse the company for are state funded. Uh, how we help them is through pre-employment recruiting processes, selection systems, and this is where we work very closely with the career centers and with ADRS and, and some of your uh, business reps and your case managers across the state uh, when we're looking for individuals um, for companies to hire. You know, pre-COVID, we were almost, well, we were under 3%, 2.7, 2 2.8% on employment. And so we were really struggling to find workers and Finally, in my opinion, at least, finally, the uh, rehabilitation services was beginning to get the respect that they deserve and certainly should have always had. 
because employers finally beginning to listen to what that resource is. And we did our best and still do our best to help move that along. I think we're gonna be very quickly back to that post COVID. Um, that's what our business climate looks like today in our state, very um, moving rapidly back. Uh, some of the things we partnered with the uh, Department of Rehabilitation Services on, one that we were very proud of, although it hasn't happened yet, was uh, Transformers 2020, where we were going to host a group of um, high schoolers, uh, clients of, uh, of, your, of your programs, at various centers across the state, the Robot Technology Park, the uh, Maritime Training Center, the Alabama Workforce Training Center in Birmingham, Mar uh, Montgomery Workforce Training Center. And in those, pro in those locations, we were going to work with the students, parents, teachers, on what business is looking for, how you can access this training and, um, and actually let them have some hands-on experience in some of the potential jobs. Um, the bad news is COVID clipped that and it didn't get to move forward, but it's our understanding and we're certainly hopeful that it will happen in 2021 and we'll continue and, and, and be allowed to be a partner in that because we certainly believe that's a very valuable piece of uh, the workforce puzzle. Um, in addition to that, in the department or in, excuse me, in the AIDT, we have some of our top level management involved in the um, Supportive Employment Coordinating Committee, in which uh, I think that's a, from my understanding, an ADRS mental health uh, combined committee. And our staff uh, worked along with the others on that committee to uh, form a strategic plan um, in, in various uh, parts of um, getting the word out, marketing in particular, connecting, these uh, potential clients with employers through the AIDT and other places. Um, we also have been partnered with Gentry, EH Gentry there in, uh, in Talladega uh, and uh, been doing ready to work programs there for a number of years. Uh, and we're looking forward to hopefully uh, growing that to some other areas. Um, so those are several things that AIDT is involved in. WIOA, Workforce Innovations Opportunity Act, uh, Title I in particular, we, uh, we're, we help fund or are funding uh, three of the, uh, I believe it's the uh, out of school youth programs in Decatur, Gadsden and Fort Payne. Um, I know there's numerous other task force and committees we partner on and are part of. Uh, mutually so we have certainly invited ADRS and other staff uh, to those and we're included in, and have been asked many times in our part of various task forces. The Alabama Workforce Council um, probably hasn't done anything specifically but the regional councils certainly have and some examples of that in region one and region two there's some project search programs uh, in regions three, five, and six, um, uh, many of your uh, colleagues are part of the hiring events, the uh, worlds of work events that happen in region three, Tuscaloosa, um, Gadsden area and other places in those regions. And certainly are part of industry cluster meetings and uh, invited in to talk about um, how to access your clients and the benefits of that. Um, in the uh, in, in various ADRS staff serve on uh, boards, the regional workforce councils and some of the special committees and task forces associated with those. So a good bit of, of that work going on. We at the, uh, in commerce fund the regional council staff in each of the seven locations. We also have staff out of commerce that assist each region uh, and with your help, we certainly have uh, a lot of the bases covered when it comes to assisting business, find their workers, train their existing workers, and hopefully add um, workers with assisted, uh, with some um, uh, um, assistive technology so they can uh, be a very valuable part of, of the new hiring going on. So 
again, and, and then I'll mention the AOA, the Alabama Office of Apprenticeship. We have not uh, it's it's new uh, a, a couple of years now been in in position and we're developing it just now getting our staff hired uh, to full uh, at least for our current uh, staffing uh, plan and as they move across the state they have meetings already set up with various of your partners and colleagues uh, in rehab services vocational services and it's our goal and we hope that we can foster, create, uh, innovate some apprenticeship programs that your, uh, many of your folks, your client folks would certainly be uh, interested in and hopefully find a career in. Uh, we believe that apprenticeship training is probably one of the better ways to do skilled training, especially deep, long-term uh, and rigorous training that these uh, folks need out there in these businesses. All of you know, I hope that the governor has um, challenged us with uh, a new program, Success Plus. Um, and Success Plus, the main goal is by 2025 to have half a million workers in our workforce with credentials of value. What that really is, is education attainment. Uh, currently, we are in percentages, we're probably 43% as a state. We need to get to 60, 61% by 2025 to be able to just to hold our own, much less grow the economy. Because, um, and I'm not sure what you know about this, but many of, and there may be some employers here in this conference that will uh, validate this for me. But across our uh, businesses in Alabama, we are certainly, we have certainly become a technical state. Uh, we, at the end of this year, will be the second largest automotive producer in the country. Uh, and I don't know if you know it, but in most uh, cars today, technology is certainly king. Um, and what it takes to build vehicles, uh, much less airplanes and other things in this state, uh, is pretty incredible. We are rapidly moving toward what we call uh, Industry 4.0, which is essentially the fourth industry revolution in our country. What that means is we're going to um, digital factories, essentially smart factories. So our workforce is going to have to certainly uh, be very well-rounded in their uh, training, their education. Uh, I told a group this morning, and I believe this to be true, that STEM education is truly basic education today for our employers and what the employers need in their workforce whether it's a tech company that's, you know, developing uh, coding uh, software, whether it's a manufacturer, a food processor, uh, a, even uh, agricultural, uh, farming, um, forestry, harvesting and, and planning and all of that. Most of that and much of that is certainly uh, tech savvy and using all the available technology. And what's allowed that, of course, is cloud technology and so forth. But the world is rapidly moving in that into that area. And what to me that really does for many of your clients is just allows them to be a good employee. I mean, it, the the ground is is becoming more level for all people. Uh, a disability can quickly be handled with accessibility and with assistive technology and you know, when you're dealing with that, uh, it certainly isn't a uh, hard uh, jump to go from what a little bit of addition to make it certainly very uh, a level play and field for all the workforce. So um, in conclusion, I'll just tell you that we have many challenges in the state. We uh, certainly need all of uh, all of our citizens that want to work in a job and working. One of our uh, tasks here in commerce um, is to do that work, to get that done. Uh, we need uh, your clients. We need all available people who are willing to be trained and are trainable and uh, have a good work ethic and attitude. And with those traits, I don't know of a person that can't uh, function in the workplace. Now, I'm sure there are some jobs that might be a stretch, but again, I go back to this technology thing as technology continues to grow and 
in our uh, what used to be a lot of hands-on things now have become more like um, watching monitors and screens and making sure that the uh, flow of a process is moving as it should and meeting all of its uh, specs and so forth. And that really is done in a uh, almost a um, space age uh, Star Trek room, if you will, uh, certainly uh, an area. Uh, and we see this already in many of our manufacturers where most of the technology simply runs. And there's only a handful of operators that are monitoring the screens to make sure they run. Folks, those people can, those jobs can be filled by, by any person who really has the, uh, the attitude to do that kind of work. And so we're looking forward to working with your, uh, you and your uh, counterparts across the state. We do work with many of them already. Certainly appreciate Commissioner Bertishaw and, and all of her team. Um, one of my favorite people in this world is Dana Foster Barber. And I hope she's listening because um, she has taught me many things about the challenges that come with, with this, uh, with her, uh, with some of these um, disabilities. So thank you. I appreciate the uh, opportunity to be here. Thanks for being invited. And um, please call or ask questions if needed. Thank you.